What's up, guys? Just wanted to do a quick video. We did a trading on this in the server the other day, but uh, I was hoping to be able to upload it live. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the audio, so my bad. I apologize for that. Yeah, if you're watching, again, thank you guys for hopping in. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded an actual video that wasn't just a live stream, so I appreciate you guys. If you can give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, always super helpful. So. Without further ado, here's the training. It was about gap trading rules. And again, what, what's a gap? So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through and define what gaps are in trading. We're going to specify specific types of gaps. And I'm going to give you a set of rules that I've used to actually trade around these situations that are extremely reliable. There's probably going to be a couple of things you don't know about this. Uh, maybe some things that you did that might be review. But again, hopefully this video helps out a lot of people in their trading journeys. And if you want to know more about this again papergains.com join the group we have a super active server and we are opening a couple different subscription plans too so keep a lookout for some new offers coming very soon all right guys so what is a gap right so number one a gap essentially and i'm going to read this defined as an instance which there are inefficiencies or imbalances in the market you'll hear this term all the time imbalances like what what is that what the hell is an imbalance basically it's just that there's more buyers than sellers and something's not equal. We're gonna go through a couple different types of gaps and here's a list of them. One that I'm gonna highlight now to the very bottom of this list is called a fair value gap. I love the name fair value gap and it's super popular right now, especially as people trading ICT or smart money concepts, same thing. I've traded that system for years before it was ever a thing. I think most professional traders actually use that system or some variant of in addition to maybe the strat and things like that without getting too detailed fair value gaps is a good wording for that because the market has not defined what fair value is for a specific price range and i just want you to keep that in mind what fair value is inside of a specific price range that's what uh, trading around gaps is really all about so what kind of gaps are there, right? Every type of gap actually gets traded a little bit differently. Top one here is called the runaway gap. And this is what you see a lot, right? That's what the most, like that's probably the most prevalent gap. That's that's typically defined by a fundamental catalyst. I have it listed here as FA catalyst, fundamental analysis catalyst. Uh, think earnings gap, right? Where you have a, a power earnings gap. Something's had reported earnings and it completely changes the fundamental story around the company or whatever it is that you're trading. And the market goes into what we call price discovery mode. And it just either takes off to the upside or actually maybe it completely dumps and doesn't seem to have a bottom, right? These are runaway gaps and they're defined by number one, high volume and fundamental catalysts. You know, uh, instead of going through each one of these through this slide, I have a couple, right? So we just went through number one, what runaway gaps, also called breakaway gaps, sequential price points. So if it's going up, it's breaking through multiple levels of resistance, going down, breaking multiple levels of support, defined by intense investor interest, right? So fundamental changes in whatever the story is you can see this in spy sometimes where like a cpi data data point comes out or non-farm payrolls comes out and it changes the fundamental story of the underlying asset or market in this play in instance so this is those fundamental events create these type of gaps. Another type of gap is called an exhaustion gap. Exhaustion gap does typically create session gaps or fair value gaps that we'll go through also in a little bit. They tend to, to highlight a technical reversal. I'll just give you an example. If a stock is going up, 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 and then all of a sudden overnight, it just like poof, opens super low. And you're like, whoa, what happened? This thing was going completely higher. An exhaustion gap is where something runs out of buyers if it's pushing to the upside, or maybe it's going down, 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 down. And I'll, I'll bring up an instance of this where maybe it gaps down, but instantly reverses. It gapped down and instantly reversed because guess what? It ran out of sellers. So exhaustion gaps are, are trends that have maybe, maybe seem to be unrelenting. And then all of a sudden one day you have this big gap and you're like, oh, Okay, that should be a sign of pause. Sometimes in candlesticks, like we might call them kill candles. Uh, that's another term I like to use. But an exhaustion gap is essentially if it's going, something's going in a well-defined trend and randomly gaps, it's either run out of sellers or run out of buyers. And they typically uh, signal trend reversals. Another one is called a session gap. And I want to be very clear on session gaps. So session gaps are defined by zero trading in between an overnight session. 
what's important here is that when people look at session gaps, a lot, a lot of times traders will use either a daily time frame that doesn't show extended hours or don't have extended hours on. I'm going to ask you guys to specifically turn on your extended hours trading on your charts, whatever it is, and then zoom in and see where was price where do price literally have zero trading you will find these instances when there is no trading between a certain price level that to me personally is a session gap if there's trading in the after hours or extended market times you know to me hey look it traded there so it's not necessarily a gap i don't want to count those kind of things i'm looking for exactly zero trades within a specific price point and that that is a thing um and, I, and that's where the priority i put on and the focus that i put on these go the last one that we're going to talk about is fair value gaps again super important fair value gaps very tradable we use this all the time it's essentially areas on a chart where stocks is move sharply so defined by sharp volume with either like constant sellings going down or constant buying going down but it's very very one-sided volume you'll see this by looking at like really big long candles right so typically best to see them on a 30 minute chart or maybe higher uh that that's when they really jump out at you but a fair value gap again it's uh it's where the market basically experiences a sharp sharp amount of volume on one side or the other right it's just like it's been bought up so fast that sellers really haven't had a chance to do anything uh people get stuck in there and they tend to fill at least partially, and we'll go through this, for the market to define what fair value is within that certain price range. So here's what everyone's waiting for, the actual rules. So number one, go with all gaps that don't fill right away. This means that if an early trade, it doesn't start to correct the quote unquote imbalance or the gap doesn't start to fill, then price is likely to actually go in the direction of the gap. They don't tend to fill the first day. If they do, that's fine. You could trade towards them. But if they don't even try to fill the first day don't even attempt to, to try to trade towards the gap just go with the trend right number two larger gaps can often fail to fill in the first day which we just noticed or may fill partially that's going to be a second one if you start to see a gap fill partially we'll go through some rules on how to specifically trade around that situation number three if a gap fills in the same day the odds of a late day rally on a gap up or a late day sell off on a gap down our highest. Well, again, we'll define this a little bit more, but if the gap fills in that same day that the gap was created, it's likely that it was an exhaustion gap and it will be a trend reversal. Number four, large gaps create elevated IP, IV and option buyers should avoid these like the plague, right? So option sellers on the other hand should take advantage of exactly these situations. The market will, st will stall and digest the overnight move and not go anywhere. What's important to note is a lot of people see this big giant move and you'll get FOMO. Don't be that guy or girl, right? Don't, don't jump in front of a gap. If you see massive gaps, a lot of our crew will tend to just sit the day out completely knowing that more often than not, you're not going to get a move in the morning session. It's likely going to be the following day or maybe, maybe a back half move, right? But when something moves significantly, uh, it, you know, markets are either running or resting. And again, we'll go through that. You don't want to be the person jumping in front of that train for sure. Number one, here's the rule. Go with all gaps that don't fill right away. So what does that look like? And I had pull up a chart here. Stock that we looked at, I think was SoFi in the live trading, right? And SoFi had a gap right here this day that rent went pretty heavily and so this was an example of to me this is going to be a runaway gap but there was a fundamental event it's not earnings a fundamental event in the market going to be able to charge interest or basically get that revenue back for the student loans that they've been sitting on for so long money that they have not been able to receive for for a significant period of time extended hours on remember this is a one hour time frame we have a clear session gap right so this is a clear session gap right now no trading zip zero not a trading in between four five forty one and here so what happens in this i'm going to zoom in just a little bit in this day right as you play the day forward the gap here's the open didn't even attempt to fill right so here's your level this is your prior high in this instance it did not even attempt to fill this is again what do we do with these types of gaps? Go with the gaps that don't fill, fill right away. If early trade doesn't even start to correct this imbalance, then it will likely move in the direction of the gap. This is a gap and go, also called a runaway or breakaway. 
high probability of a back half rally or following day continuation. And what do we get in this instance? Here's that day's trade and here's your continuation. And honestly, in this instance, she's just gone. I mean, just pretty much gone. Uh, and it didn't, it didn't really look back. So this is, this is that exact instance. You don't want to be the person caught trying to, trying to trade towards a gap fill, uh, even though it was a clean gap. If it doesn't fill right away, don't even try. Forget that it's there. You can mark it on your chart, but don't try to get, go after it that day. Number two, large gaps often fail to fill right away. So we saw that just now, uh, or may only fill partially, right? So if the gap fills partially, we want to know what does partial look like? So in this instance, we're going to pull out our FIB tools, Fibonacci tools, and we're going to measure a retracement. There's something called a half gap, right? And I, I just want you to remember, a half gap is a very real thing, and a half gap is measured from the prior close to the, to the pre-market high, right? So... 50%, if 50% of that with fills, it's likely that that may be it, right? And the next instance that we pulled up on this one, I believe was Palantir. Yeah, and this was an earnings gap, right? And so I'm just gonna pull this really quick. So this is an earnings gap, tend, tending to be a runaway gap. In this instance, the, there is trade, right? And I'll just say, hey, look, we do have what's called a fair value gap here but this was an earnings event. So I need to be aware specifically on, on a fundamental breakout. They don't tend to fill. Uh, it's, it's going to likely be a, a runaway gap or some, some flavor of that. So here's the following day's trade. If this is the open right here. So here's the event. This is my announcement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my fib tool, which is right here. I'm going to measure from the close to the high and extended hours and the close to the high in extended hours here. This is this 50% retracement on my just a typical Fibonacci tool, left to right, 50% retracement right here. This is a half gap, this is filled. This is a 618 right here. This is your typical golden pocket that you're looking for from a Fib perspective. This is likely it, right? And so what happens? If that's it, if you had taken this trade knowing that, hey, that's a half gap fill, anything higher, it's likely going to continue and have a back half rally and possibly continuation look what happens this is the exact this is the exact situation that we're looking for and that's and that's actually exactly what we get now okay let's say you missed that what can we do is we still have our 50% tool here right if i want to maybe still watch this for a while i can say okay well this is my most recent high right here now this is again it's about the same it didn't really matter in this instance if it was here so about nine bucks right there, that's a nice even number, would be my half gap fill from this earnings, power earnings gap and a basic pullback. So do I get a half gap fill? And this is how specific this is. Look at how close that was. Look at, look at how precise that is. That is exactly 50% right there. Guess what? That's it. One more time, uh, you're done, right? And so this thing continues to push up. It's a slow grind, but guess what? We're just continuing in, in that direct, same direction and she's gone. But this is it. This is your half gap fill right there. This is a real thing. You can do this on SPY, SPY, SPX, whatever you want to do. You want to consider, especially on something like this, that is clearly maybe a runaway gap. I mean, that's all that that's going to be, right? Until this train re tra trend reverses and I get an actual break of structure, I can't, I can't really think that that's going to come into play anytime soon. So again, half gap, it's a thing. Partial fills, that ten, tends to be just as good as a full fill. And I only want to look towards a full fill if it's if it's beyond that 50% gap. So if I'm trading in the direction of a gap, 50% will be my first target. And then if it does fill that and then extend, maybe I can look for a further, further gap. Uh, number three, if the gap fills, let's say it fills on the same day that the gap was created, the odds of a late day rally on a gap up or a late day sell off on a gap down are highest, right? So what does that mean? So that these are typical reversal signals, right? So you want to think a gap fills and then immediately gets, let's say gaps down and immediately gets bought, bought up and it's completely filled. So it's actually likely that it's going to reverse trend. And you want to think about that would be like a green hammer candlestick right or a red shooting star candlestick if it was the reverse if it was gapping up and then immediately got hit by a bunch of sellers out of the gate just completely filling the gap to, to the downside and then continuing on that is typical of an exhaustion gap and likely a reversal signal right and you want to trade the opposite so again signals to trade the opposite direction of the gap 
if the stock or whatever it is that you're trading closes below like more than 61.8%, 61.8% filled, right? The odds of the of a continuation are actually higher than 60%. So um, just a quick one. I know I, I took this trade very recently. So this is, uh, sorry, this is a little chart. I, I had this chart on anyways. This is an active trade. So we were trading this. <clears throat> Perfect example is target right here. Very recent, right? So here's the target chart right and then i'm gonna slow this down just a little bit still using a 30 minute chart i like to use that here's my gap right so the gap is from here and this is all still extended hours to here this is a very clean there is no trade going on in this instance right we're watching this okay so it's it's still selling off in the pre-market uh and then finally you know market opens and it's not extending and all of a sudden you get this okay well this has been you know, chopping up right around, let's call it here. I'm getting this kind of like break of structure signal. And I'm like, wait a second. Uh, that's the point where, okay, we can trade for a gap fill. Most likely I can trade for a half gap, right? If I took this to here, I'm already at my half gap right away. So that's, 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 that box is already checked. If I push this forward, this is the same day. I have a full fill. This is clearly an exhaustion gap. There are no more sellers. This is a perfect example of a, of a unrelenting downtrend. We've run out of sellers, basically. What does that mean to us? As traders, we know like if it stops going down and I have a gap like this, that's an exhaustion gap, well, it's got to at least go up a little bit before it can go back down because there are no more sellers below 130. That's what we know uh, based on this right here. So I can expect this to maybe chop around, tag the top of this gap, uh, but that will likely be it. Does that gap even, like that gap's already filled. Um, and so what happened? So this guy, let's go ahead and play it forward just a little bit more. Uh, yeah, and we've got a, you know, for the following day, a, a clean break of trend. Uh, break of structure rather, and we are reversing. So this is an example of that number three. If the gap fills in the same day, uh, you know, it's likely that this is a trend reversal and or a exhaustion gap. Cool? Very cool. Number four, large gaps should be avoided. So num <laughs> why, why does this matter, right? So number one, like when, uh, you know, markets are either running or resting, and this is the very bottom of that, right? Once a big move is made, the market has to really digest this right and this means like it does it it doesn't mean that the market's going to pull back i want to be very specific just because something is gapped significantly it does not mean that it's going to pull back it means it's going to rest that means completely sideways more often than not that is what you're going to get right this is the ideal situation if you're selling options as income you're actually looking for an exhaustion type gap or maybe something is done moving in a specific place it's probably going to rest for a little while and absorb what that move just <laughs> what what move just happened right uh if you're an option buyer and if you're a new option buyer look this is the exact situation where most newer traders find themselves they actually buy an option they may even get the direction right but guess what they lose money even though they got the direction right that's because they were crazy overpriced options immediately after an opening gap right those are those are situations where it's honestly just best to sit on your hands uh, and kind of just ride out the storm maybe check back later on but you probably want to put that ticker on the back burner, you can set some levels. Um, let's take a look. Let's see, NVIDIA. I, I have not looked at NVIDIA, this is live. Here's an earnings gap, right? If you are sitting on calls on NVIDIA, look, <laughs> you're you're really, this is, what, what did it open at? This is that pre-market high, post-market high right here. Here's the opening price of NVIDIA the day that, it's, that it actually reported. I mean, that was 384, <laughs> one two three four five days ago where is it right now three it's barely 390 look like it's gonna sit right on 384 385 bucks probably for a significant period of time i don't want to be the guy caught sitting on calls or puts in this situation this is an exact situation where look markets are either resting or running they're not in constant motion that is probably one of the major defining things between like a professional trader and a non-professional trader i i like to use amazon as a good example of that here's an amazon chart uh, a very long dated amazon chart here's a rest period for a stock and stocks typically they rest for typically the same amount of time. So this is 566 days. I hope you guys can see this. 566 days right here uh, in a 20%, you know, range. I'm gonna hold control down, duplicate this, right? 
and bring this straight over here, guess what? How long does Amazon tend to sit in here? This is about 561 days, about two years. This stock tends to rest, right? Where are we now? You know, who knows? So we're we're right about here. It, you never know, right? Like, but typically <laughs> a stock will tend to rest for about the same time that it does historically. And this is again, you know, the run period is a very short period, right? So in between here, you're talking, you know, this is a a, a three month period to move however, you know, 50 plus percent. Again, we're taking talking three months to move 50 per plus percent. This is typical. We'll go back to NVIDIA. If something really, this is a big move for NVIDIA. <laughs> do, do I really think that it's going to extend this move? Uh, I don't know. It's That is a massive move, a massive move. Let's just do this. I, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'm going to assume it's going to be something similar. So this is 210 days for a resting period, give or take for NVIDIA, right? 210 days. That's about that. It's chopping around this level, right? What is this done here? That's about yeah, about the same time. And now it's time for a run. Cool. Well, sorry to say it might, it might be, <laughs> it might have to sit here and digest that for a while. You never know. But the point of the story is, look, if something's moved quickly, you want to give it a break. You don't want to be the person that's jumping in front of the, of the train and you don't want to be immediately trading for a reversal. It could be a continuation. We don't know. But what we do know is that unless NVIDIA is trading over $419.38 or below, I'm going to say, we're going to say 365. This is a big range. Yes, I know. But unless it's outside of this massive $60 range, that's probably the box it's going to stay in for quite a while. If I really wanted to get you know specific, okay, I could measure a half gap and I might be right around that 360 level if I wanted to maybe take some shots, but it's going to be a while before that actually happens. Will it extend? You know, it's not going higher for sure unless it's over 420. Otherwise, while it's in this kind of box, you can you can trade for that. But that's that's the general gist of what we're looking for. Num, the last one here is fair value gaps. So fair value gaps, that's the probably the most popular one. If you look up this term, it's a three candle sequence. You want to look for a clean break, and we want to look for neighboring candles that just don't have any real trading in between. I can look at them. I can look at a volume profile tool and have that actually highlight a lot of these areas. And I tend to use that quite a bit on the volume profile tool. Before we look at it, it's going to be on the right hand side of my screen. It's going to look like a lot of the, like a mountain range, like peaks and valleys in a mountain range. We want to trade from peak to peak essentially in that mountain range. And that's going to identify those low volume areas where the market will tend to retrace back into these into these valleys of that mountain range and define what fair value is because it didn't have a chance to do that. So a really good chart to look at this is Tesla. Tesla has a ton of these. So one thing to note, fair value gaps don't always fill. That's super, super important. This is this is a good instance here where we have a gap, a session. It's not a session gap, but it's kind of a runaway gap. There's a fair value gap right here. In this instance, I need to know that, hey, you know what? They don't always fill. So if I'm sitting here waiting for this fair value gap to fill, this is 162. I never, I never actually get it. If I had my my fib tool and I'm I'm you know measuring from here to here, do I have my 50% retracement? Yes, I do. So this is why it's important. Know that the gaps are there, but don't always expect them to go. This is Tesla at 168 down to 165. How did you know that this was the bottom? You know, I was buying Tesla here. I was ready to buy it if it got down to 162. But if you were the person waiting for 162 on Tesla, you missed your opportunity and it proceeded to run. Now it's we're all the way up to 220, right? So that's why it's super important. Don't don't always expect a fair value gap to fill just because it existed. If you get that type of half gap fill, consider that filled. You want to have multiple confluences, if you will. We're always using fibs. This right here, this is going to be your clean break of structure. This is our prior consolidation high all the way up over here. That's about where, where Tesla stopped. If I want to run a fib from this swing low all the way up to this swing high, that is exactly a 50% retracement right there. That should be good enough to start a position. You should be ready to roll 20 day moving average right here. So many confluences, half gap from just the, that first major push to the upside. But again, yes, fair value gaps do do tend to be good entry points. If they fill 50% of the way, 
I would consider that a win. And how we use them on the other end is really entry points and targets, right? So if I have a session gap, so I have a clean session gap on Tesla here. When I was in this trade to the long side, I have this, I mark these on my charts. I have another fair value gap all the way up here. That's like super finite. I find them on the larger time frames, and then I do tend to refine them and I refine them down to like a 15 minute time frame. That's that's how I do it. Right. So I find here's a big fair value session. But if I really want to nail it, I can I can go into a 15 minute. Um, and then at that point, here's where we are. Tesla. Guess what? Here is that session gap. That's a major target. Right. Major price target and then we just tagged and i don't know what's going to happen on come monday but this was that ultimate fair value gap right here 216 we'll see how this goes uh but for right now that is target acquired uh that trade can be closed out and then you look for your next entry point or just take profit take a little bit of profit at that point in time um so again that's fair value gaps we're looking for those large candles uh we're looking for those as potential entry points and exit points of our trading uh, we know that if they happen and they're violent very sharp movement we also want to measure pull out your fib tool measure a half gap right so a half gap may end up being all you get and you don't want to miss that trade so start with that high time frame refine it down to a lower time frame uh, identify what's that very first candle to the left you want to look left and then basically pin that just just with a, a line or however right that's for that's pretty much it for today hope you guys got something out of the video again just remember just because because a gap exists doesn't mean that it's gonna fill pull that fib tool out see if you can measure it i guarantee you're gonna go back on a ton of charts and you're gonna be like oh my god the half gap that half gap filled right every day it, it's something to remember use your volume profile tool validate your gaps you want to trade peak to peak refine them to those smaller interval charts get as specific and precise as you can all right that's it for me guys and i will see you on the next one